Hey everybody, this is Zoo Tycooner Steve, and I thought I'd try something a little different today. Um, in the past I've just put up like a few single exhibits with tutorials, and I figured today I would try starting like a full Let's Play, where instead of just doing a single exhibit, I would try and construct a zoo, maybe do an exhibit at a time. Uh, so I've already gone ahead here and started with my entrance. Um, it's pretty much the same entrance that I posted earlier in the tutorial for the basic zoo entrance. Just check my channel for it, or I'll probably put a link in the description. Uh, it might be a little bit different, but it's essentially the same thing. And um, so we'll go ahead and go through this, and you can tell me what you like, if you like it this way, or if you want me to go back to single exhibits, or if I get no responses at all, I'll probably go back to the old way. But uh, we'll try it here, and we'll get ready to do our first exhibit. So let's hop up into the sky mode so I can see what's going on. And I typically pause the game while I'm working because for some reason I, I get annoyed if like guests are wandering in and bothering me. Uh, so I already kind of know how I want to do my first exhibit. Now, um, my philosophy is to try to kind of make it as much like a regular zoo as possible. And so usually I tend to do small exhibits right at the beginning. Um, Usually, eh, you know, not necessarily like a small mammal, or in this case, I'm going to do uh, some bird exhibits, some um, small aviaries here up front. And uh, right now, I'm just putting down the past because I kind of know what I want to do for these exhibits, and I'm going to have one on either side. That's why I'm forking the path here, and I'll just put like some trees or something in the middle. Uh, but let me grab some chain link fences here and put these aviaries down. Um, yeah, looks good. Well, deeper than that, four deep. Yeah, four deep. So a seven by four box is basically what I'm going to start with here, and I'm going to put one on the other side. I actually think I'm going to stagger them a bit, so this one will start like one. Yeah, there we go. One higher, and go one further, so they're not exactly lined up with each other. We give a little character to the zoo here up front. And now I'm just going to go in, and let's go ahead and finish these paths off. Uh, I usually pick, uh, for the main path of my zoo, I pick one of the pathways that I have both the rounded corners and the flat corners on, just so I don't have to go OCD when I don't have a corner match up exactly with a fence. So I should mention that I've got a lot of downloads in my zoo. Uh, I'll try to post links to all the ones I can remember. Uh, usually if you're looking for mods or any downloads for Zoo Tycoon, the best place to start is um, at Roundtree. Just go to Zeta Roundtree, just Google it, you'll find it. I'll put a link in the box for that too. And now I realize I've made a terrible mistake. Um, usually, again, I try to make mine look exactly like a zoo as possible, and you'll notice most zoos, uh, they don't usually put the exhibits right up against the path. They usually try to give you like a little space in between, and then maybe there'll be a little section, like a viewing area, where you're allowed to get up to the fence close. But uh, they do that to you know, lessen the stress to the animals and all that, and I try to copy that. Uh, plus it gives you the opportunity to like put in plants and everything between the actual exhibit and the pathway just let you make your zoo a little bit nicer. So we'll go ahead and rebuild this here. Seven by four. Um, I guess I should also mention why I'm kind of fussing around here that I don't consider myself the best zoo tycooner. There are a couple other people that are better. Uh, if you're just looking for inspiration from YouTube, some of the people that inspire me, like if you want to do um, Zoo Master Ben, someone who I like to watch a lot. He, he and um, I, what is the actual, I believe her actual uh, YouTube handle is Siri Pixel Biologist. Um, if you want to watch them series videos, I do recommend those. Um, particularly if you're someone who wants like lots of plants, I tend to go very sparse with my plants. Um, in terms of inside the actual exhibit, I want to be able to see the animals maybe a little bit more than the realistic. Um, she tends to be the exact opposite, so maybe if you do her and me, you'll get a very good idea of what kind of zoo you want. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to have these two bird exhibits, and I'm pretty sure I know what I want in this first one, although I can't find it right now. Um, let's narrow this list down. Uh, Temperate Forest, I think, is where it is, and... No, no... Um, oh, oh, there it is. Yep, right in front of me. Okay. 
Uh, the Eastern Wild Turkey. Uh, where did I get this? I believe this was the same people that make the Radical Remake Pack. I think they had a holiday. Uh, so again, I'll try to put all the downloads as a uh, link in the box. But if you can't find it, just Google the Radical Remake. And on the same page, you'll have a holiday pack. Um, Alright, so let's get a little more technical with the design here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is make a little house for our turkeys here. Because, uh, again, real exhibits, you're going to want to have a place where the animals can actually get away from the guest and just be in peace. And uh, I'm playing this in sandbox mode, like I said, but typically I like to play challenge mode. Because um, I'm a person who, uh, it's not just making really good looking exhibits, I also want the animals and everybody, like all the guests, to be happy. And I find challenge mode forces you into that a little bit more. Uh, so what I'll do is not only just make an area that looks like an exhibit, but like I did here, right here, I'll put the actual working animal house inside that area. So that way the turkeys that are living here can actually go find their shelter, uh, be happy, and um, Oh, another sort of pro tip here, you'll notice I put their food outside, the termite log, and I'll put some grass outside too, and then I put the shelter and the two waters inside, and um, a really good idea with your exhibits is to sort of stagger where you put the food, um, and stagger where you put the water or put their houses, that way they kind of have to walk through the exhibit when they, you know, like if it's in the shelter and it gets hungry, it's got to go out there and eat, and if it's in the out there eating and it says, hey, I need to take a break, or I want to play with my lookout post. So I didn't flatten the ground first, I should have done that, oh well. Uh, you put them around there. Uh, a really good example of this is if, uh, there's another YouTuber called, I think it's Zoo Tycooner 14 and she has a, it's, it's an elephant exhibit, I forget if it's an Asian elephant or African elephant, but it's a really cool display. It's basically a U, where at the top of the U, one side is all the elephant's food, the other top part of the U is the elephant's shelter, and then the guest area goes along the bottom of the U. And so you kind of get to watch the elephants walk back and forth. It's probably not the best let's play, since all I'm doing is really just recommending other people's channels to watch. But, you know, you go out there and get inspired by whoever inspires you. And if I do that, fine. If you just, you know, Never watch me again after this, but like the other people, that's okay. You know, I really like Zoo Tycoon, and I hope more people play it. Um, let's see. I think I'll do some strawberries here. Um, one of the things I like to do, like with that basic food right there, with the grass, is kind of cover them up. Uh, it doesn't affect the hitbox for the food, so you can actually sit there, uh, sit it right on top of the food, and it'll still look fine. Uh, it'll still work fine. I mean, uh, the turkeys will be able to get it. And it won't just be, you know, a big bowl of water or a big pile of obviously sat down grass. Uh, little ferns here. Like I said, I tend to go sparser. Uh, so you'll notice I kind of decorate around the edges and leave the main area in front of the guests kind of open to dirt. Um, probably not the most zoo realistic area, but uh, I, I like it. It looks good. Uh, nothing frustrates me more than when you go to the actual zoos and like, you know, you see two animals because they're all so well hidden in the exhibit, so I'll, I'll take a little liberty there. Um, okay, so let's go on and start putting the roofs on these displays. Yeah. Uh, so a roof I really like is, uh, I call it the bamboo roof here. Do, 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 do. It's right here, the red one. Uh, it's wooden elevated path is the official name, but it looks kind of like a thatched bamboo roof. Um, I find it works really good, particularly with the sort of light brown wood that I tend to use. And I did make, just to give it a little more interesting, you might notice the aviary, the actual chain link fence is a level 4. I'm using a level 3 for the boxes, uh, just to give it a little more character. And then I'm going to use this railing here to get everything up. And then I can never see, or I don't like how the... Uh, chain link roof works so what I tend to do is just put down a regular roof like the stone one here first do, do, do. go all the corners and then once it's painted in it's I think much easier to see the chain link roof once I grab it here you can see it really clearly when I'm putting it in so I think this is gonna work just fine it's a nice little box for our eastern wild turkeys 
Um, let me get rid of these columns here. Bye, bye, and bye. Okay. And we'll put our worker here and go ahead and just assign him. My typical policy is um, one zookeeper per each exhibit. Uh, since these are birds, if you were playing in the challenge mode, um, they always frustrate me because birds tend to produce a lot of poo and they get messy and it's it's just annoying. Um, and now what I'm doing here is I don't like, just even though it's a level 3, I, I, I find that to be too high since that's not how we do doors, we usually put a frame around them. So what I'll do right now is go ahead and, where is it, there we are. Go ahead and just sort of frame the top of the door and let me set up some floating railings here. Bye bye, welcome back. And bye bye again, would you leave your railings? So now it's going to look more like a, more like a regular door where it's got the railing over the top there. Okay, and that's fine. Let's take a look at our other exhibit. Uh, now again, to add a little character, what I think I'm going to do is this time I'll put the house on the opposite side. That should give it a little bit more. It's not so heterogeneous and not so boring, I guess, is the big thing. Uh -huh. let's, let's just use the peacock. Uh, I do peacocks a lot. Uh, uh, they're really good as a first uh, animal exhibit. Again, in, uh, if you're doing challenge mode, I would recommend them because they're both cheap and people really like them. But it's going to be a you know, fairly simple exhibit. Um, now, one nice thing, I've talked a lot about challenge mode, one nice thing about sandbox mode is that, like, those wild turkeys, um, they work great, they look great, people will donate them, guests like them, um, but if you're playing challenge mode, there is no Eastern Wild Turkey gift in the gift shop. So if you use them as your only exhibit up front, you're actually hurting your chances of making money. So it's just a pro tip. Uh, if you are playing challenge mode, I do recommend staying more to the actual Zoo Tycoon uh, animals because they're not going to have such major problems, or at least you're going to be able to make more money off them, which is going to make that mode much easier. But we are playing in sandbox, so it should be fairly easy. Uh, we don't have to worry about money. We can just plot down whatever animals we feel like. And put the entrance here. Uh, I really dislike um, uh, when people put down the actual entrance to the exhibit like right on the path with the people. Uh, that, that really annoys me, even though it's, you know, sometimes the only practical way to do it, the way you've set it up. Um, still, it, it just, you know, if you can hide that, why don't you? Uh, I think that'll be fine. I don't think the tree is going to affect the hitbox for that food. If it is, we might end up moving it. But uh, put down some of these ferns. I love these ferns a lot. Um, I think they're actually... Yeah, I think they might be temper forest, but either way, I tend to throw them in pretty much every exhibit. Matter of fact, speaking of temper forest, I haven't changed the ground here. Let's do that. And uh, my policy with painting the ground is kind of just do it dirt first and then put in all the objects and find out where that animal's path is. Because, you know, in a real zoo, the area that the animal walks in is obviously going to be the area where there's less grass because it's been trampled down. Um, oh no, I can't put it there. I can't put the rock there. That's where the food is. I don't know if the tree will affect the hitbox, but the rock certainly will. So we'll put it there. Now I've got a fern going through the rock, so let's move that a little bit. Do -do. Come with me, little fern. Come with me. Very cool. All right. Let's get our zookeeper assigned here. Lady zookeeper this time. You are in charge of the peafowls. And uh, we're going to do the same thing with the roof. Well, I guess we need to put the peafowls in first. Let's actually put those in. And it is peafowls. I'd like to point that out. Uh, peafowls is a species. Peahens are the females, and peacocks are the males. So just the guys with the tails are peacocks. I don't know why people have problems with that, but it does seem to happen. Okay, now, put the roof on. And, and that's a combo, again. If you watch 
or if you go back and look at the, uh, the previous videos I posted with just the exhibits, I tend to use that kind of roof and that type of fence, that light brown wood fence a lot, just because I think it looks good, but you can do it whatever you want. Um, that's one of the things I really like about sim games like this, is that uh, there is no wrong way, but there's not necessarily a right way either. Like, you can screw up, like, you know, challenge mode, you can run your zoo into debt, uh, you can make an ugly exhibit, but uh, one of the things I find about Zoo Tycoon 2 or any of the tycoon games, particularly with online communities, is that there are people that just have such a different aesthetic sense for me and I from them that you can find some really good varied displays and varied ideas and uh, it makes it a lot of fun. And so I'm going to go ahead then and connect up just a short little viewing area. Like I said, most uh, actual zoo displays, they're recessed from the path, so you can't poke at the animals. But um, they'll have like a little area, and that area usually has a different kind of fencing, like a glass. Here, I'm just going to leave it. Yeah, I'm just going to... Yeah, I'm just going to leave it as the aviary. Or, I keep calling it aviary, it's a chain link. And now I'm going to put in the pathway fence. Uh, Again, most zoos, they'll have a little fence around the path. I tend to like this uh, low wooden fence. I think this came from... Where did this come from? Uh, it's probably one of Snow Leo's things. Um, oh, I should mention, to get rid of your entrance, like I did, I use Snow Leo's combi patch. Uh, again, I'll, if I remember, I'll put it in the comment bo or the description box. And if not, just, you know... Google Snow Leo Combi Patch, you'll find it. And that comes with a lot of uh, a lot of good things for modding your Zoo Tycoon 2 files. Um, it's going to let you not only just get rid of your uh, starting gate to be able to build your own entrance, but it's going to like allow you to put, pan uh, put plants down that aren't on the grid. And um, here's another typical thing I do. I'm going to use this royal fern here. Uh, the way I tend to do landscaping, uh, particularly landscaping around the path where I'm just sort of filling in the area, is I tend to build it, like, I guess what I'll say is three plants deep, where I'll put down a basic plant, like a grass or a weed of some type. In this case, I'm using the royal ferns because they're pretty small. And then I will put in sort of a bush or low tree, like a second tier. And then I'll put in a tall tree. Yeah. In this case, my low tier ones, I'm using the Russian thistle. Yeah, I'm using Russian thistles. I can see them. Let me grab one here. Do, do, do. Thank you, Mr. Russian Thistle. I think that comes from the Artifacts Arabian Nights pack. Again, don't quote me. And again, I'll put down the links. And if not, Google Artifacts Arabian Nights. But I find that's a good... Uh, particularly with that royal fern, since they're kind of the same colors. You know, they've obviously got a couple different uh, skins here, because they come in slightly different shades of green when I put them down each time. But I find those mesh really well, and I really like them as sort of uh, that middle level. And then I tend to use the English oaks as my big trees. Um, and that'll change. Uh, I started this a map. This is the large city map, so it's a temperate grassland, is the ambient for all the basic skies and everything. Let me put down a few of these oaks here to fill in that area. One in the middle. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, I like that. That's that's not bad. Um, what else do I want here? Now, you know what I'm going to do? Instead of just keep doing the ferns, I've got this long grass here, which I really like. And I'm just going to use that to fill in the areas right next to the exhibits. So I've got this kind of brown patch here. Let me fill them in. That's, uh, huh. That's weird. I'm thinking this should have like skins with. Maybe I have the wrong one. Maybe it's not long grass. I'm thinking of. I'm pretty sure it was called long grass. It's. It's. I've used it before. I really liked it. Um. You know. Let's see. Let's make sure that's right. Um. Whoops. Uh. Um, oh, 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 no, definitely not that. Uh -huh. 
Uh, you know what? Here it is. Okay, it's not long grass, it's grass. And the reason I like the grass is, well, it's not as long, so it doesn't block the display as much as the long grass. Um, but there is a variant skin that has, like, uh, little flowers in it. I don't know if they're supposed to be daffodils or daisies or whatever. Probably supposed to be daisies. Because they've got both white and yellow, but I think that makes it look a little nicer. So we'll just fill in this area uh, with plenty of grass. Um, like I said, if you're really interested in plants, definitely want to check out Siri Pixel Biologist. I'm almost sure that's her YouTube name. But, uh, you know, if you just do Siri, S-E-R-I, you'll probably find her. And she posts all the time. And um, I actually find her channel really enjoyable because she's been doing it for quite a while now. And frankly, when she started, I don't think she was really that good. Uh, but she's learned a lot. She's grown a lot since then. Um, and now she's she's better than I am. I'll, I'll be honest. She's way surpasses me now. But uh, I really enjoyed watching all of her videos and sort of following that growth. So, uh, and maybe I'll get better if I keep doing these. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, maybe I'm terrible at it and I'm just aggrandizing myself and you're laughing at me the whole time. That could be. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, definitely, if you want planned advice, check out hers. If you want the kind of halfway to actually caring grass advice, uh, you can keep watching me. I wouldn't mind it. You can go right ahead and keep watching. I'm gonna even I'm not even gonna charge it. You can keep watching for free. How about that? That's the deal. Do 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 okay. That grass is all in. Um what next? What next? Okay, let me I've sort of prepped this place for the animals. Let's start prepping it for the humans because can't just think about the animals, we have to think about our guests too. That's a very part, part of the job. Um, I really like using this modern bench, I think it looks very nice. And it goes well with the uh, fence right there that I like to use. They're fairly close in color and they look alright. So let's plop a couple of you guys down. Is that right? I'm not sure if that's the right distance. Maybe there? Okay. Alright, well if it's not the right distance, who, who cares? Well, it's close enough. And do some here on the turkey side. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Do, do, do. And one more. Oh, see, it didn't line up right. Alright, well, here, we'll put this one. Well, you know what? Uh, my OCD is going to kick in, so let's put this one right. And we'll move this one over to here. And there we go. And. Do, do, do. Now, what I'm going to do, since I did a 2 by one area there, I'm going to go ahead and use a uh, viewing canopy. Um, this is... they're basically just there to look nice. Uh, get rid of this. Um, I think that if you're playing like an actual uh, challenge game, they actually increase how much guests like an exhibit. But uh, again, we're not playing that, and I don't tend to use them that much, but here I think they'll look nice. I think it'll give a clearer sense of what we want. And it just occurred to me that we did all that work with the turkeys, and I did not even put the turkeys in the stinking exhibit. So let's go ahead and make sure we actually have some turkeys, since we have this nice exhibit for them. Uh, okay, turn that fence down so we can get in. One and two, I guess. It's not like their plumage is that much different, so... Well, I guess the male turkey looks like has a larger tail. I don't know. It's a good, it's a good. I've used the turkeys before. I do recommend them. Guests seem to really like them. And... Of course, uh, again, we're playing uh, sandbox mode, so I don't have to, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in some donation boxes here. Just as a way, um, even though we don't need the money, it'll let us track which exhibits are very popular and which exhibits uh, exhibits are not so popular because guests are skipping over them and not putting any money there. Um, and I do care about guests. Um, so, all right, I think we've got something going here. Let's go back down into walk around mode and take a peek. So here we are, wonderful day at the zoo. Let's go in. Hello, good sir. I would like to purchase one zoo ticket, please. Thank you. And we are off. 
Um, okay, that area's looking a little sparse. I'm gonna have to, I think, probably just move that Russian thistle. Uh, yeah, I'm liking the grass there. We get a pretty good look. Yeah, you can really see the turkeys well. Uh, again, the exhibit itself is probably a little sparse. That's something that I'm always kind of conscious of, but when I'm making them, I don't really care. Um, because I'd rather be able to see the animals. Uh, let's go over here. How are our peacocks doing? You know, I forgot to put the frame on that door, didn't I? Yeah, the rest is okay, but... Let's just go ahead and put the frame on the door, just so it looks a little nicer. In my head, at least. You might think it looks like crap, but, um, it's my zoo, and I think this looks nicer. So we're gonna take this again. I should mention to do the floating walkways. If you don't know how to, what you have to do here is pause the game. Well, here, we gotta... Uh, where is the... There it is. So basically what you do is you put your the railing on that you would want, and you pause the game, and then you need to delete the walkway completely, do the undo button, and when you delete the walkway again it will actually keep the railings on the side. And that'll work uh, provided the game is paused and it can't be an angled thing. It's got to either be perpendicular or parallel with the zoo wall. Um, and can we just fill this in with the Russian or the Royal Ferns? Nope, gonna have to move the thistle. Which means you're gonna have to move the thistle next to it, so otherwise there's gonna be this big gap that's unexplained, and oh, it's terrible. It's such arduous work running a zoo, isn't it? Okay, you can go right there. And is that okay? I think it's three on either side, right? Yeah, that looks fine. It looks great, it's fantastic. Oh, there's our first guest. He's coming into the zoo. Hello, ma'am. I'm gonna walk right through you. Oh, I saw your glasses for a second. Yeah, that looks much better. Much fuller. And I like how that kind of looks like it's really fuller from the side. Um, yeah, a little sparse, but I'm not gonna fret about it. Uh, so, obviously... Oh, let's double check, because I haven't really looked at this. Again, a little on the sparse side there, but I don't feel bad about it. I'm happy with that. Um, so, next thing we're going to do is probably uh, continue that path up, make a little food court. Um, let's take a look here in the map. So you can see we've got a lot of room left. Uh, if you have any suggestions, if you have any animals you want to see, please don't hesitate to let me know. Just say, hey Steve, this is an animal I want to see, leave a comment. Alright, bye!